Hello students, in this video of the projectile motion we are going to discuss that how to calculate the radius of curvature at any point on the path of a projectile. Here we are going to prove that if a particle is thrown from the ground with initial velocity u making an angle theta with the horizontal, then after any general point when the velocity makes an angle alpha with respect to the horizontal, then the radius of curvature of this small part of this curved path of the parabola is given by this formula u square cos square theta divided by g cos cube alpha. So let us proceed how to get this answer. Before that I would like to tell you that I have already made one video on how to calculate the radius of curvature of the parabolic path at the topmost point of the motion. That video got 12.3 thousand views and therefore I am motivated to create one more video for finding the radius of curvature at any general point like here on the parabolic path. Let's begin. So here is the starting. Suppose a particle from the ground is given a velocity u at an angle theta with the horizontal then we have resolved the components horizontal and vertical components of the initial velocity as u cos theta and u sin theta. Here we must remember that whichever component makes angle theta with respect to the vector will be cosine component and the other component that makes 90 minus theta angle would be the sine component. Now we want to find out the radius of curvature of this small piece of the path of the parabola. For example, consider this small length. It's a very, very small circumference of this parabola and we want to find out its radius of curvature. What does it mean? That imagine a circle whose curvature exactly fits on this small length of the parabola. If the radius of this circle is r, then we can say that the radius of curvature of this small length of the parabolic path will also be equal to the radius of the circle because the curvature of this circle is exactly fitting on that curve of the parabola. So how can we find out the radius? Let us see. First of all, let us say our particle has reached here from the ground and at this moment its velocity is v along this tangential direction. You must note that the instantaneous velocity vector is always along the tangential direction of the trajectory. Even at the initial point also, the velocity is tangential to the curved path and at this point also, the velocity vector is tangential to the curved path. Now, let us draw this horizontal line. Let us suppose with respect to the horizontal direction, this velocity vector makes angle alpha. Then we can create horizontal and vertical component of this velocity vector as I said already that whichever component makes the angle with respect to the vector will be cosine component that means this is v cos alpha and the one which makes 90 minus alpha will be v sin alpha component. Then next thing what about the acceleration of this particle? If you ignore the air resistance, then you know only the force acting on the particle is the gravitational force, which acts vertically downwards. So because of that, the particle will have acceleration due to gravity only in the vertically downward direction. So this is the net acceleration g of the particle. Notice here the angle between velocity and acceleration are some kind of obtuse angle. Now, let us break this velocity, sorry, the acceleration vector into two components. One component of the acceleration we are taking along the radial direction of this circle, along the radius, that means toward the center of the circle. And another component we will make along the tangent. You know, any vector can be broken into two components which are perpendicular to each other. Now, how to find out this component, which of these component would be cosine component and which one will be the sine component for which we need to know which angle here is alpha. Look at this, here angle is alpha. So what about this angle over here? 
this angle here must be 90 minus alpha because look at this velocity vector it is along the tangent and look at this component of g which is along the radius in any circle you know the tangent and the radius are perpendicular to each other therefore we can say this velocity vector and this component of g are perpendicular to each other so if this angle is alpha the remaining should be 90 minus alpha now what about this angle here once again we see look at the g vector which is in the vertical direction and look at this line which is a horizontal line so angle between horizontal and vertical is 90 degree that means this much amount of total angle is 90 degree and this part is already 90 minus alpha so the remaining angle here must be equal to alpha thus this component which is making the angle alpha with the vector must be the cosine component so this is g cos alpha and then this component must be g sin alpha so finally we have resolved the component of acceleration also one component along the radial direction or toward the center of the circle which is g cos alpha and along the tangential g sin alpha now let us learn some basics of the circular motion over here suppose a particle is moving along a circle Velocity vector will be along the tangent as it's already written here instantaneous velocity vector is always along the tangential direction of the trajectory So in this circular path the trajectory is a circle and the particle is moving along the circle So the velocity vector will be along the tangential direction Secondly, we also know in circular motion that a particle will experience centripetal acceleration toward the center of the circle That is called as AC or centripetal acceleration whose value is given by v square by r square of the speed divided by the radius of that circle this concept will apply on this circle can you tell in this circle which component of acceleration is acting like the centripetal acceleration toward the center obviously this one as you can see g cos alpha is pointing toward the center of the circle therefore we can say that g, g cos alpha acts like the centripetal acceleration and what about the other component g sin alpha that will be called as tangential acceleration so up till now what we have done the acceleration of the particle g has been resolved into two components one along the radial direction or toward the center that is g cos alpha which will be centripetal acceleration and other component g sin alpha is the tangential acceleration now to find the radius of this circle we need to use this formula centripetal acceleration is equal to v square by r so here is the centripetal acceleration g cos alpha so from this diagram we start our solution like this firstly what about this velocity v can we find the velocity v magnitude over here because we require this magnitude for this formula v square by r can we write down v in terms of this initial velocity u for that we will use this concept that a horizontal component of velocity remains constant you know in a projectile motion the horizontal component of velocity always remains constant so we can say this component and this component must be equal that means v cos alpha must be equal to u cos theta by transposing cos alpha on the other side we can say v is equal to u cos theta by cos alpha now we use the concept of the circular motion from here so centripetal acceleration is v square by r now you notice that which is the centripetal acceleration this component of acceleration g cos alpha is the centripetal acceleration toward the center and this must be equal to square of the speed divided by the radius so at this moment the speed of the particle is v along the tangent and let us say r is the radius of this circle which is also the radius of curvature of this parabola at this point proceeding further by transposing r to this side bring g cos alpha to below the denominator so we get radius of curvature is v square by g cos alpha now the value v is already calculated here substitute this value v over here and we will get v square will become u square cos square theta by cos square alpha written here and in the denominator these two get multiplied and we will get u square cos square theta by g cos cube alpha hence here is the answer radius of curvature at any general point on this parabolic path will be u square cos square theta by g cos cube alpha you can see that this answer depends on three factors one is the initial velocity u second is the initial angle of projection that is theta and thirdly 
that uh, we, at whichever point you want to know the radius of curvature you need to know what is the angle alpha made by the velocity vector at that point let us look at one numerical problem based on the same formula a particle is thrown with initial velocity u is equal to 10 meter per second from the ground making an angle theta is equal to 60 degree with the horizontal find the radius of curvature of the parabolic path when the velocity vector makes angle alpha 45 degree with the horizontal so here you see three data are given u is given theta is given and alpha is given and on the previous page you saw that radius of curvature depends on these three factors only so we can now write down that what is given to us theta is given as 60 degree and alpha is given as 45 degree so we will require cos theta value in the formula the cos of 60 degree is 1 by 2 and cos of 45 degree is 1 by root 2 then in the formula for radius of curvature in the numerator we need cos square theta that will be 1 by 4 and in the denominator we need cos cube alpha that means 1 by root 2 into 1 by root 2 into 1 by root 2 that is 1 by 2 root 2 therefore writing the formula radius of curvature and substituting the values here initial velocity is given at 10 so u square is 100 cos square theta is 1 by 4 and g is equal to 10 and cos cube alpha is 1 by 2 root 2 so 10 cancelled sorry 100 cancelled by 10 would be 10 and into 1 by 4 and this denominator 1 upon 1 by root 2 root 2 will go up in the numerator and we'll get the final answer as 5 root 2 meters this 2 will cancel 4 2 times then 2 5 is a 10 so 5 into root 2 meters is the answer of this question uh, i hope yeah, you have liked my video kindly press the like button and subscribe also my channel is the physics guru thank you all of you